chosen of Andraste, the blessed hero sent to save us all. I didn't ask for this, but someone has to find a way to seal the breach. Spoken nobly indeed. You think I'm mocking you? This age has made people cynical. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay there. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodating. But you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. See. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. Uh -huh. The destruction yeah. of the conclave you'll, you'll, proves that. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? Tá. Vamos saber um pouco mais sobre o imaterial. Esse vídeo eu acho que vai ser mais de conversa para a gente descobrir um pouco mais das coisas, né? What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts. But I can share what I've learned. Como vocês estão aí acostumados, quem é que acompanhou o Dragon Age, então vocês sabem que eu gosto de fazer vídeos só de perguntas, né? Descobrir a história. I'd like to know more about the breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about demons. Your circle says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation. Not in the world we know today. The veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. É isso aí, é bom é esse cara que ele gosta que você seja de gente boa. Beleza. Você tem mais alguma Hello. coisa para falar? Não, não. Olha, opa, vamos aprender um pouco mais sobre o Solas. I'd like to know more about you, Solas. Why? You're an apostate, yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solas. 
I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? Kita ni jawab lah. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. You trust these spirits not to possess you the first time you accidentally make a wish? Do you trust your friends not to turn on you? Well, yes, but they're people. Ah, of course. You know what I mean. Are people only people because they are flesh and blood? Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? Como assim? Pelo seu peito do pé. Pelo do pé. Ah, ela querendo parar de ser namorável, né? Okay. They're not defined by their bodies, but they do have bodies. You need one to be a person. A demon possessing a corpse has a body. A living body. A demon possesses a living mage to become an abomination. They didn't make that body, they just took it over. Technically, your mother created your body. With some help from your father, one assumes? You've thought about this. On occasion, yes. Tá, vamos descobrir mais um pouco sobre as solas hoje? You said you traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake, out of the fade, became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits, and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imaginations. To find interesting areas, one must be interesting. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroy the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I've enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. 
You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Ai, que beleza. Nós estamos conversando. Só mais uma última coisa. Se tem alguma coisa aqui, gente. Não, valeu. We'll talk later. É isso aí, gente. Eu vou conversar um pouquinho com o Vero, que esse vídeo vai ser isso mesmo, tá, galera? Conversas. Se você é novo no canal, é mais para a gente conhecer os personagens. Simpatizar com eles, né? O Varric, né? O Varric, o Varric. Que isso, Varric? Fala comigo. Pergunta sobre o Hulk. Vamos ver isso. Eu li a sua tale do champion e tenho algumas perguntas. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Pode fazer flexão. Very, que você tá fazendo flexão pra quê? É muita hesitação falar. Deve ser. Ah. Vamos primeiro saber sobre Andrews. What happened to the mage who destroyed the Kirkwall Chantry? The book never said. He fled Kirkwall with the mages from the circle. Stayed with them a while. But he had to move on. Somehow a lot of mages blamed him for making them live as fugitives. I don't know where he is now, and I don't want to know. Nossa, sir. Não gosto muito do Andrews. There's no way Hawk really could have killed the Arashok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently the Arashok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. In the book, you say that first Enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? Well, I can't tell you how. But why, all I can say is he was desperate. Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars, so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Dalish clan. Fenris has kept himself busy, hunting down the Tevinter slavers who came south to prey on the refugees. I'm not sure exactly where he is at the moment. You can usually follow the trail of corpses, though. Isabella went back to the raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge or just has a really big hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Sebastian went back to Starkhaven. I'm sure he's boring all sorts of people there. Last I knew, Hawk's sister Bethany was doing something warden -y near the Anderfels border. Aveline is still guard captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. Oh, interessante isso daí de saber sobre nossos companheiros do dois, né? Olha, Meryl ficou foda, vamos ser sinceros, né? Você tem mais alguma coisa pra falar? Uh, perguntas pessoais. Hmm. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. <laughs> Rarry, que me fale mais sobre como você conheceu a Cassandra. How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that. And I had answers. I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network and occasionally I write books. Eu acredito mais que você escreva livros, mas tudo bem. If you've run a spy network, why is Leliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and Worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. You're an author. What kind of books have you written? I've tried my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in Hightown, guards breaking the rules to get things done. 
The tale of the champion is the most famous thing I've written, or infamous, maybe. I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. Opa, what sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravane somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca? She's one of a kind. Funny story. I bought a salvaged ship and found her locked in a dragon bone reinforced chest in the hold. I broke three dozen lockpicks and blunted nine saws opening that trunk, but it was worth it. Who is she named for? I can't tell you. And the reason for that is? Complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Are you from Ferelden? Ole? Free marches, born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no, Kirkwall's not that bad. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Mais alguma coisa, Varric? Need something? Uh, the red lyrium we found at the temple seemed to upset you. My brother Bartrand and I sort of discovered red lyrium during an expedition in the deep roads. We located an ancient tig, so old it barely looked dwarven. There was this idol there made of it. Bartrand brought it back to the surface, and well, everything's gone downhill from there. How did the Red Lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. So as far as I knew, the only piece to make it to the surface was destroyed. And the location of the Taig it came from is a secret. Did someone find more of it in the Deep Roads? That's not a cheery thought. So what is it? Just another kind of Lyrium? The red stuff is Lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. It also turned Kirkwall's night commander to lyrium. Everyone's been kept at least a hundred paces from it since. I think that's enough on Red Lyrium. Yeah, not really my favorite subject. So you see something? Exatamente. Carry on. E é isso aí, pessoal. Acho que só tinha ele, a Cassandra e a Nilsolas para conversar. E hoje realmente foi só um vídeo de conversa pra gente entender um pouco mais o que aconteceu Tanto com o Hulk, né? Uma história aí depois um, E descobrir um pouco mais sobre a vida dos dois personagens Que é importante a gente saber né? RPG é isso, galera É você descobrir as coisas Opa, mais observação aí É a gente descobrir as coisas sobre... O mundo e os personagens. Eu acho que pelo menos essas duas conversas entre Solas e Verco foi até importante para a história. No final a gente estava falando sobre Hulk e tudo que aconteceu no Dragon Age. Depois tudo que aconteceu no Dragon Age 2. E falando sobre o com Solas, sobre a brecha e tudo mais. Achei que isso é muito importante. Moça, volta aqui. Deixa eu ver tua armadura. Ah não, foi esquisito. Meu Deus, a armadura é feia. E o Solos também não tem mais nada pra falar, né? Solos. Sim, ele realmente não tem mais nada. Nós concluímos todas as conversas. No próximo vídeo a gente vai continuar com as missões principais aí. É, eu sei o que, que vai acontecer mais ou menos se eu entrar aqui. Na verdade é a minha missão principal. Eu meio que fiz caca na hora que eu tava tentando né, dar uma olhada nas coisas e pilhar tudo que tinha nessa cidade. 
E eu entrei ali sem querer primeiro. Mas, entrar ali vai ficar para o próximo vídeo. Espero que vocês tenham gostado dessa conversa. Eu acho que não vai ter tantas conversas assim. Eu vou selecionar que tipo de... Que tipo de quest eu vou fazer, porque nem todas as quests eu vou ficar fazendo, mostrando aqui. Como é no caso dessas quests secundárias, que é pegar essas raízes, pegar pedra, pegar não sei o que. Cria isso, cria aquilo. Né? Essas coisas não são necessárias pra ficar... Tanto que eu meio que deixei, só deixei pra vocês verem, mas eu não vou fazer esse tipo de quest aqui pro vídeo não, beleza? Eu vou continuar a história sempre. É uma... E... Tô ficando por aqui, espero que vocês tenham gostado. Fui!